Schedule has been challenging here early with three top 20 opponents early on for the Vols, but definitely better than anticipated at the offensive end of the court for Tennessee. Balls on offense and in the white. Start the oh. second half. McRae on the first pass from the baseline. The rebound controlled by Fraley. I'm sure you want Jerron Maiman making that move, creating offense for you. <laughs> the odd looking play, but Tennessee able to still get a good shot. And the, uh, the enthusiasm in the building. It is, uh, he's not been there so far for these balls. Heard more chatter in a Sunday morning church service. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's like that. People talking while the preacher's trying to. <laughs> Amening. Uh, oh. uh, 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 yeah. Encouraging. Off the inbound. Jump shot buried by Baker. Good start by the governors here in the second half. Baker knocking out the jumper, and Austin P likes this uh, quiet in the building. They want to keep it this way. You see the numbers behind that dominance that we talked about for Tennessee in the paint. Despite that fact, and they get another point in the paint there, too, as a matter of fact, from Kenny Hall, who now has 10. Despite all that, the Governors are very much in this ballgame. They are. They are. They've done a nice job out away from the basket against Tennessee, not giving up much as far as three-point shooting to the balls. And Austin P shooting it very well today. Hall comes up with the steal and calls the timeout before the ball can go out of bounds. And so we'll take this early timeout as well in the opening 90 seconds of the second half. I was rolling along. That's I, I can't find anybody to do that for. I can't handle the other part of it. Kind of Pressure easy. Smoke from the governors here. Numbers now. Maiman put it on the floor, got the basket, and got fouled. Austin P. they have a lot of quickness and guys that are very good as far as taking the basketball away. But they didn't get the turnover from Tennessee, and it turned into an easy basket for the Vols at the end of Austin P.'s pressure beat. Mm. Barely scraped the iron, but another offensive rebound for the Vols, and that results in Kenny Hall going to the foul line. That's good offense for Tennessee. Just miss a shot and then go get it. They have dominated the offensive backboards today against Austin Peay. And Kenny Hall officially has a double-double now. 11 points and 10 rebounds. Three fouls now on Baker. Hall has nearly uh, doubled his per-game average and now officially has. A solid post performer for Tennessee. A good defender, good rebounder. Typically not going to generate a bunch of points for you. But a solid inside piece for Tennessee in Conzo Martin. He's got 22 rebounds now the last two games. He had a career-high 12 against Pitt last Saturday. Tennessee, uh, it looks like they have players who can consistently produce points. So if Kenny Hall can do the job rebounding, It'll be a big piece of the puzzle for Tennessee. That was Melvin Baker with the three-point basket. That's the second for the Governors today. Melvin Baker 0 for 7 on the season for three-point range, but able to knock that one home. Baker nearly came up with a steal, but couldn't run it down and ended up losing his footing. Ray, the runner. Jordan McRae, just his sixth point of the day. Jordan McRae has played real well lately. A good score. You can see his ability on that play. He's such a long player. It's difficult to stop him when he gets in the paint. Bullet pass that Fraley could not hold on to. Golden had it knocked away from behind, and then the balls lose it out of bounds, but apparently last touch by the Governors. Off the inbounds, McRae. We started the day by talking about the combination of Golden and McRae. That results in an easy two off the inbounds, and now the largest lead of the day for the Vols. Jordan McRae has 
maintain his patience today. He has had some opportunities to score here lately and take advantage of those, but hasn't forced the season. Number seven, a fifth team that has been in the top 25. The Commodores have uh, struggled in some close games here lately, but a lot of talent in Nashville this year as well. Good year for the league from a basketball standpoint. Hey, hey, Edmondson shot it too hard and also committed an offensive foul. Cameron Tatum standing in, taking the hit. Good job by Tatum as the balls have picked up their play here to start the second half, taking control of this ballgame. Two fouls now on Taishwan Edmondson. Ray got tied up, committed an offensive foul, got in too deep with his penetration. That'll be the first foul on him. Yeah, two defenders waiting for him there. That's a, a situation where you want to draw those defenders, and then you got open teammates out away from the basket beyond the three-point line. McCray just didn't make the proper decision there, and he gets the quick hook. Skyler McBee checks in for McCray. The governors go back on offense, and Tatum is called for the foul. Two fouls now on Tatum. Baker. Edmondson keeps it alive for the governor. Finds a spot behind the line and nails a three. Ashwan Edmondson having a good ball game today. Hopefully for Austin P, that will carry over for the rest of this game and the rest of this season. Edmondson can be a prolific score. He has 11 to be to the corner. Out of Maimon's range. And a foul is going to be called on Baker, and that's number four on him, I believe. It is number four on Baker, so he's in foul trouble as we are just four and a half minutes in to the second half. On to Christmas. And we're not far away from Christmas. I think today what, marks two weeks away. Two weeks from tomorrow. That's right. Two weeks in a day. Yeah, I need to. Two weeks away from my shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm running out of time and a, and a lot to do on that front. Foul called on McBee. Defensive stand here by Tennessee. They've kept the basketball on that left side of the court for most of this possession. Fraley with the layup and a foul by Hall. And up until they fouled him and he scored. That was solid <laughs> D. <laughs> oh, nicely done by Jerome Clyburn finding the big man. They haven't gotten John Fraley involved since the really the early stages of the game. Fraley had a couple of baskets, but not much activity out of him since then. Good find there by Clyburn to give Fraley the easy two and the opportunity for three. That was his first basket since he scored four of their first seven points. And now he has a chance to complete a three-point play. You see his season average, two points. That was in the one game that he played. He had two points and ten rebounds in their season opener against Middle Tennessee. And again, had not played since that time as he was coming back from a concussion. Austin P needs more offensive production from Fraley. If they're going to have a successful season, he has to has to score a few more points than he has. Josh Terry jumped the route and nearly came up with the interception. <laughs> a 
Luce says they'd like to get six to eight points per game from Fraley. Austin Peay still very much in this ball game. You get the sense that Tennessee has a bigger lead than they do because they have been so dominating in the paint. Golden launches a three, and the rebound is controlled by Triggs, who called a timeout, no, but they're not going to allow good. that. They will not allow him to call that timeout. John Hampton gave him the timeout, and now Gary Maxwell will step in and say, can't do that anymore. Talked to uh, Gary Maxwell before the game on that very topic, and he was explaining that you have to have at least one foot on the floor to get that timeout call. Can't get the timeout as you're flying out of bounds as Austin P tried to there. And I like that change in the rules. We got to a point there a couple of seasons where every time a guy grabbed the ball in the air, he called a timeout. <laughs> Austin P playing their 2 3 zone defense. Tennessee needs to penetrate it, get into the middle of it. That's how you score. Get the ball to Big Jerron Maiman. 18 for him. Nice move by Skyler McBee to set Maiman up for the easy bucket. Traveling's going to be the call, or will they call a foul instead? Yep, got him with the body. Maiman a... Two-time high school player of the year in Wisconsin actually started his career at Marquette. Did not play there long before transferring to Tennessee. I really didn't play very well in his first season in Knoxville last year. Kind of frustrated with his role on the team. But has been content to do his work around the basket so far this season under Conzo Martin, and Maiman has been very effective. Edmondson gets fouled again, and this time Edmondson will be going to the foul line. Richardson called for the foul. Austin P hanging around, still only down nine. We got a chance in this game. Already in the bonus here yeah. in the second half. Their cause is uh, going to be greatly helped by that fact. Good. Both. Was just the third miss for the governors at the free throw line today. They are nine for 12. On the season, they are 65%. Much better job from the line today, and that is that is very much aided their cause as Austin P trying to full court press his own press here this time. It's not working. You see the combination of Maiman and Hall, a combined 30 points in this ball game. 17 rebounds, I believe. Yeah, Kenny Hall already with a double-double today. 12 points and 10 rebounds. Just his second career double-double. We still have plenty of time to play. McBee can't leave him open. Just a crack of daylight's all he needs. Yeah, he is the one guy that you absolutely have to find when you're playing your zone defense. Have to be sure you track him. Skyler McBee, very productive for Tennessee. His three-point shooting and good ball handling as well. Pass from Edmondson was knocked out of bounds. It'll be the governor's ball. Here's Skyler McBee off the assist. Trey Golden gets in the lane, draws the defense in. And McBee takes advantage of the open opportunity. Back on the end for the Governors here. Fraley was fouled on the inbounds pass, putting up the shot. And McInjula is called for the foul on the Volunteers. So Fraley will be at the line. Foul shooting, not John Fraley's best thing. 29% on the season. Nice touch. Yeah, nice touch. <laughs> Didn't shoot it hard, just got a nice little roll right off the top of that rim. One. Seven points for Fraley today and five rebounds. Fifth year senior out of uh, Clarksville, the hometown of Austin Peay State University. Played at Heritage Christian. Fraley able to coax those two free throws home. The governor's hanging in. They do a better job out of his own defense. That helps a bad shot, quick shot from Richardson. And Clyburn 
Beat Golden to the hoop. How about Trey Golden? Long pass for Hall, airmailed it. And Golden, no points today. Their leading score at 16 a game has still got a bagel. Doing a nice job getting his teammates involved, but got to get some, some point production out of Trey Golden as well. Triggs limping off. Looks like that might be a cramp situation for him. Austin P in Tennessee, the governors with only one win so far this season, playing here live at Thompson Bowling Arena. I'm Matt Stewart along with Barry Booker. SEC basketball presented by Regions Bank, Edmondson. And the rebound is won by Maiman. Balls continue to dominate the backboards. McBee. And Terry the rebound for the Governors. The zone defense has been effective for Austin P in that it's gotten Tennessee away from their strength, which is pounding the basketball inside. They have, the balls have been content to hoist up the long jumper, and that has aided Austin P's comeback. And John Fraley, big game for him in his return to the lineup after a three week absence. He's got nine today, and the Governors are down only five. The Governors are taking the basketball inside on their offensive possessions, getting some good scoring opportunities. Yeah. And another turnover by the Volunteers. Skyler McBee knocking down a three for the balls, but the Governors taking it to Tennessee on the other end. They are trying to get to that as much as possible, but they need some production from their excellent backcourt, Golden and McCray. Golden is 0 for 5, 0 for 3 on his three-point attempts, and he had been one of the top sharpshooters in the Southeastern Conference, seventh in the conference in three-point field goal percentage, and ninth in the conference in threes per game. Austin P has a lead down to five right now. Real chance as we get to the latter stages of this ball game. Braley not in the ball game out of the timeout. He had been very effective now with 10 points and five rebounds, and the governor's kind of given the volunteers a taste of their own medicine. Five on the shot clock, and Clyburn rebound snagged by McRae. Without Fraley on the court, Austin P extremely small. But the zone defense has been effective because of the shot selection from Tennessee. They have 6 6 forward Chris Freeman playing in the middle for the Governor's right now, number 15. McRae, lots of contact, no whistle, and a basket by Jordan McRae. Nice job that time by Tennessee attacking that zone defense. McRae getting the ball around the rim. And Golden called for the foul. That's going to be number two on him. Remember, the Governors have now been in the bonus for about three minutes. So that puts Clyburn at the line. 73% free throw shooter. Meantime, only five team fouls on the Governors, so the ball is still a ways away from getting in the bonus themselves. It's irrelevant, though, if you don't hit the free throws. Yeah, big miss there. But it's pretty much like a turnover. You miss that front end of the one and one. McRae, another miss behind the three-point line. Adam doesn't look very comfortable behind the three-point line today. A 47% three-point shooter coming into the game. and He turned the first one down, and it came back to him and missed it badly. Not showing much confidence in that jumper today. Blocked by Hall. Great hustle by Baker to save the possession for Austin P. Eight on the shot clock. Remember, the clock did not reset, but there's no iron touch to buy the ball. Inside they go to Freeman, who banked it in with the left hand. Without Fraley on the court, you can see how small Austin P becomes, but that time, Chris Freeman still able to shake loose, get a big basket for Austin P, cut that lead to five once again. Golden, lots of contact. He'll go to the line. Freeman's going to be called for the foul. Austin P starting to 
watch the Vols get inside their zone defense. McCray last time down, Golden this time getting into the paint. Good things happening for Tennessee when they get it around the basket today. First point of the game, for Trey Golden. Eighth in the SEC, 79% from the line. He's hit the most free throws of any volunteer this season. Entry pass and able to keep it alive was Terry. I don't know how that ball got through that maze <laughs> of Tennessee defenders, but it did. And now Terry will go to the line. Tennessee buckling down defensively. They're uh, forcing Austin P to get to take some difficult shots here and work a lot of the shot clock as well. These last few possessions. Josh Terry, the only governor's player to start all 10 games. McRae now with four fouls comes out, and Skyler McBee checks in for him. Kind of emblematic of the struggles for the go governors this season. They've uh, used six different starting lineups this year, with Terry being the only guy to start every game. Maybe only you had seven starting lineups all of last year. McKee, McKee is wide open, and you know what the result of that. <laughs> a guy not lacking in confidence in his jumper. Is, uh, that, that is uh, a change from last season. Skylar McBee did uh, wane and wax as far as his confidence goes last season, and this year he is shooting the ball with a lot of confidence, and when you're making half of them are better, that helps your confidence. Josh Terry now with 11. Three governors now in double figures. Tennessee with a couple of three pointers in each half. But a four for 16 day, really not uh, characteristic of what they've been able to do so far this season, hitting 42% behind the arc for the year. Golden behind the arc, and there you go. Percentage is starting to come back as the balls knock down a couple of jumpers in a row. But when you have the, the advantage that Tennessee does inside, you better take really good three-point shots after some inside-out action. Tennessee getting that these last couple of trips. McBee comes away with it for Tennessee as it ricochets out to meet him. Seven minutes to play. Tennessee with a nine-point lead. The governors have been able to cut it to five, but get no closer than that here in the second half. Two fifty-three. Balls one of three SEC teams right now with a losing record. South Carolina and Georgia being the others, but the balls trying to climb back to five hundred with a win today. B misses the free throw, but Mayman keeps it alive for Tennessee. Austin P back into a man-to-man -man defense here lately as Tennessee solved the zone. You see, see that again. That was very effective for Dave Luce dropping into that zone defense. Mackinjula fires it off the leg of the Austin P defender, Chris Freeman. 50% for the balls. And 15 more shots. That's huge. Offensive rebounding, the big story there. Short. B off the inbounds, and Barry Booker, who shot a three or two in his life, <laughs> knew it was short when it left his hand. He didn't get his balance that time around. Richardson on the layup. Very nice. Josh Richard Richardson showing his athleticism, getting in the lane, the easy bucket. Edmondson answers with the two. Full court pressure now from the governors. Maimon. 
took it all the way down into the paint and now gets it back. Washington. Acrobatic move results in him saving the ball to the wrong team. And the foul. Josh Terry with the slam. Josh Richardson, the freshman forward, bad decision there to try to go for the block. He should have blocked out, come up with that rebound as Nick B throws it away. Three on two, and a foul is going to be called on Richardson. Got him with the body. That's going to put Josh Terry at the line for two free throws. Austin P applying some pressure defense, and that's paying dividends for the governors. They've been able to get in the transition. Easy finish there by Josh Terry after Richardson goes for the block instead of the rebound. Double bonus now. You see at the bottom of the screen there. Bonus plus. The double bonus situation. Shooting two foul shots each time they're fouled. Austin P will get that advantage as Tennessee in the bonus. A one and one situation when they get fouled as you see on the on the board there. The scoreboard at the bottom. One shot. Terry has 14 points today after going for a team high 22 in the win over Arkansas State on Monday. Governors have scored in seven of their last nine possessions. They keep hanging around. Just a few moments ago, the balls had stretched it out to 11, and now the Governors, with some opportunistic defense, have cut it to five and nearly came up with a steal off that inbounds. Now Austin P. they've tried to conserve energy in a, a lot of situations so far in this ball game, but here in the last five minutes or so, it's time to try and make the push, see if he can win this game. Golden, shot blocked. Fraley, and that leads to a run out for the Governors. Fraley, the only player on Austin P's roster who could have made that play he just did. And it turns into three for Austin P. Edmondson knocks down a three, and the Governors are down by only a basket. And a foul on Austin P. This all he just did. And it turns into three for Austin P. Edmondson knocks down a three, and the Governors are down by only a basket. And a foul on Austin P. This all started with a block by Fraley. The block shot in a three-on-one situation for Tennessee, but the players got a little bunched up. Fraley able to defend it and convert it into a three-point attempt at the other end, which Austin P is able to knock down and trim the lead to two. Conzo Martin told us yesterday that they didn't have the luxury of looking at an opponent's record and seeing that Austin P was one and nine and thinking it was going to be an easy ball game, that it would be a fight for us. And he has been prophetic in that statement as it has been a fight for the Volunteers the entire afternoon and their lead only four with just under five to play. Batted away. Ahead to McRae. Some hustle and fight from the balls on that last defensive possession. Great hustle by Maimon to get on the floor, knock the ball away, and start the break for Tennessee. up their level of intensity to fight their way back. Tennessee matched it on that last possession. We'll see if the balls can maintain that fight that they showed on Austin P's last possession. Seven on the shot clock. Edmonds in a man in his face, dumps it off to Fraley instead, who got inside the defense with a death move and put it in off the glass. He's got 12, and the governor's back to within four. Austin P with number 21, John Fraley involved. They look to be a solid OVC club with him. Without him, obviously, lost their first nine games of the season. Intercepted by Edmondson. Had Terry ahead of him, but didn't get it to him. 
now finds Terry for three. And the Governors are down only two. They called that a two and not a three. So it's 68 but they are within striking distance with three and a half minutes to play here at Thompson Bowling Arena. The volunteers just coming out of their exam period. There's sometimes a little bit of a hangover for, from that. But Austin P very excited to play against these balls today. The flagship school for the state of Tennessee, Austin P, a chance to come in here and knock off the big brother. And an offensive foul is going to be called. After a huge block on the other end by Fraley. On the shot attempt by Tatum. John Fraley making a difference for the governors here today. And it has Austin P within two. Very nice job around the basket as uh, Austin P has held their own inside around the basket here in the second half. Tennessee absolutely dominated things with Maimon and Hall inside during the first half, but it's been pretty even on the interior so far in the second half, and Austin P right in this thing. Strong adjustment from the veteran Wiley coach, Dave Luce. Get his team back in the ball game. They were down seven at the half. They've outscored the Volunteers by five here in the second half. Pass was kicked by the Governors. 15 on the shot clock. And Austin P gunning for what would be a monumental upset for their program. McRae hit the floater. McRae has 14 now. And with the pressure on, Jordan McRae taking a very good shot and able to knock it home. Nice play by the young sophomore guard. Yashwan Edmondson has been a big part of the governor's rally here in the second half. They've been down by as much as 12. Baker had no place to go with it. Still plenty of time on the shot clock for the Gulls. Baker gets it back. The left-hander fires and hits the three. <laughs> Melvin Baker, 0 for 7, coming into this game from three-point range on the season, but he has knocked home a couple from beyond the arc. Give Austin P a chance in this ballgame. I would say the crowd sits in stunned silence, but they've been pretty much silent the entire <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah, this, has been, uh, this has been par for the course today. The balls, they, they could use some help from this crowd right about now. They are in trouble against their in-state rival. A double team here on Golden and a timeout called by Conzo <laughs> Martin as Golden was in uh, deep trouble out here by the halftime, by the by half court line, I should say. Oh, very tight. With the next foul and possession arrow pointing in favor of the governors. Only six on the shot clock here for Tennessee. Clock winding down and no shot. And that's a shot clock violation. They got nowhere with that ball with six seconds. Coming out of a timeout. Looked like they had nothing set up. Yeah, yeah. Well, they tried to get it back to Golden, but Golden wasn't able to get the return pass from Kenny Hall. But at least they didn't turn it over and give Austin P the fast break opportunity, which would have happened without the timeout. Doves a chance to take the lead. On the baseline, Terry banked it in from the opposite side, and Austin P on top. Governors going for their first ever win in a series dating back to 1940. Shot blocked out of bounds by the Governors. Jerome Clyburn, a nice defensive play as Tajwan Edmondson had the sweet find. Finding Josh Terry cutting along the baseline. Acrobatic finish by Terry. Governor's first lead since 6 15 Tatum missed the layup. Hat, but no call. Not a very strong finish there by Tatum, but he did get smacked across the arm. A difference of 11 seconds on the shot clock and the game clock. And with 37 points. First bank shot by Josh Terry. Austin P. trying to seize control if they can get a basket here. Tennessee 
With their size, they still have that advantage if they can get a stop here and take it inside. If they only trail by one. Different story if Austin P scores them. Volunteers need a stop. There's 11 second difference. Game clock, shot clock. And timeout called by Dave Luce now at 20 seconds and nine on the shot clock. Dave Luce will want to draw something up that gives Austin P a chance to score going to the basket. You want to have that opportunity to, to score or hopefully get fouled. And that happens. Austin P has taken the fight to the volunteers here in the second half and now poised perhaps for a gigantic upset. This late in the shot clock, I expect the Governors to go to Tyshawn Edmondson, let him try and create something. Edmondson on the drive and gets the basket to give the Governors a three-point lead. Big trouble now. Tennessee will almost, they, they, they pretty much have to go for a three-point shot here. This late the open three, all the better for Tennessee. It has been an atypical day for the Volunteers behind the three-point line, only 28% behind the arc so far today. Came in leading the SEC at 42% from behind the three-point line. And now they are down to 12 and a half seconds looking for a three to tie the game. Did not execute the last time they had the side out of bounds play. Not looking good here either. Boy. Golden, a long three-pointer, way off the mark, rebound by Terry. He gets fouled and with 2.4 seconds left, we're about to see something that has never happened. Austin P on the verge of beating the Tennessee Vols. And Tennessee playing for the three-point shot here. You have, you have a chance to take it inside. You can Golden settle for a quick two if they give it to you. It's, it's time enough to try and score, foul right away, get another possession. But they melted so much clock away looking for that three right away get another possession but they melted so much clock away looking for that three-point shot golden had to force it up not able to get it home and let's take a look at our geico go-to player of the game and it is the man at the foul line right now josh terry with 19 points and needing one more free throw right here to put this game away 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance you can call geico at 1-800-947-AUTO if he misses this, of course, Tennessee is still a chance to tie. Big foul from here. And that gives the Governors what would seem to be an insurmountable four-point lead with 2.4 seconds left. And now Conzo Martin. Austin P. a 21-6 run over the last six minutes of this game to come up with the upset. The Tennessee Balls. At three and four on the season and two and one at home. Trey Golden, the sophomore, as we mentioned, leading the balls at 16 points per game, joined in the backcourt by Cameron Tatum, who went through graduation ceremonies yesterday, finishing up in his degree in Africana Studies. Jordan McRae joins them as well as Deron Mayman, who had the big 32 point and 20 rebound performance against Memphis back around Thanksgiving in Kenny Hall, the junior. For Austin P at one and nine on the season, the big mystery with this governor's team is they did not pick up pick up a, their first win until Monday against Arkansas State. Jerome Clyburn, the transfer from Southern Miss, Pretty Lawrence making his second career start. Josh Terry is their leading scorer at just under 13 points per game. Melvin Baker, the senior, and John Fraley back in the starting lineup for the governors. He has been out the last three weeks and suffering a concussion in their opening ball game against Middle Tennessee. Want more control and balance with your finances? Switch to Regions. Since after a stellar career at Purdue. We start with the Austin P. Governors on offense and dressed in red. Austin P. has had trouble scoring the basketball. They're not shooting such a strong percentage from the field. They're a small team as well, although number 21, John Fraley, back in the lineup, helps them from a size standpoint. And they go inside to Fraley. Fraley working against Hall, and Fraley gets the first bucket of the game. Nice job by Austin P. Getting it inside to Big John on the block, and he comes through with a bucket.